Welcome back to the garage. That was a great intro. But then I forgot what I was gonna say. Welcome back to the garage, the place where we're making your Bronco, your dream Bronco. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe as I am fully restoring this 1974 Ford Bronco. I bought this Bronco in a field for $2,000, and my goal is to fully restore it, keeping track of every dollar spent and every hour spent, to in the end, sell it and hopefully turn a profit. Now the name of this video is Restoration Day 14, but it's been, I think, two years that uh, since I bought this Bronco. I haven't been working on it for two years. It's been like 50 something hours, but uh, you know, it, it just, it's one of those things where restorations just take longer than you expect. And you know, you get in these situations where it's like you need a clip. To move on you know and so you have to buy the clip and it's two weeks out and you have to wait for shipping and all that so it's just taking longer than I thought originally but making some good headway when I bought this Bronco it was basically just a rolling chassis so I stripped everything down and had the frame powder coated then I stripped down the axles, powder coated them, and rebuilt them with 456 gears. Then I put the axles under the frame with a two and a half inch suspension lift from Tom's Off-Road. Today what we're gonna be working on is we're actually going to be installing the brakes, the brake lines, the fuel lines, the fuel system, and I'm actually gonna put the, uh, the original engine in place. I don't have an engine yet, um, but I'm gonna put the original one in place just so I can mock stuff up and uh, get fitment on stuff around the engine. Now, there's a lot going into these videos and a lot going into this restoration, and so I'm kinda keeping track of everything that I'm doing uh, to hopefully make some kind of you know, PDF that I can give to you guys so that it can help you on what all that you need to do as you're doing your restoration. So if you're interested in that, check the links below. I'll put a, a, like an email um, where you can sign up and uh, get my emails, get some notifications on when that's gonna be ready. It's gonna be a little bit, but sign up now and you can know when it's gonna be ready. So for those of you who called this out, uh, I actually had forgotten to grind this little spot down on my knuckle before installing it. I'm putting the disc brakes on and for this, if you're running a stock knuckle on this early Bronco, you need to just grind down this part of the knuckle to give you clearance for the caliper to move freely.
So I was just trying to manhandle my engine and transmission, but then I was like, why am I doing this? Um, why am I even trying to get this all in place uh, in my in my chassis right now? My my idea was, um, let me just get it in place so that I could get fitment for the brake lines and the fuel lines around everything. But then I realized like, I don't even know what engine I'm going with right now. I'm not gonna go with the three speed manual transmission that came on this Bronco. I'm gonna go with the 4R70W transmission, which is actually gonna scoot everything back. So my cross member is gonna change. My Dana 20 position is gonna change. So what's the point? <laughs> but it's ridiculous to try to fit all of this in and get it all situated knowing that this may not be the engine that I go with, knowing that this is not the transmission that I'm going with. Um, but I need your guys' help. Like, I wanna know what you guys think. What are the like engine options for real? Obviously, I don't have an infinite budget. Um, I wish I did, but my goal is to sell this in the end. So I'm okay spending a little bit of money. A Coyote uh, swap is an idea, but you know, on the cheap end, you're looking at 10,000, but realistically, you're looking at 20,000 for that engine. Um, to do that, you have to notch out some of the frame, you have to, um, you know, get fitment uh, with the body, with the inner fenders, moving those back. There's a lot of extra work. Um, so a uh, Godzilla is another option. That's like a $22,000 option. I, I don't know, you guys let me know. Like I'm trying to sell this. Like is it gonna make that much of a difference to go with a Coyote versus not? And then there's the option of just going with a Blueprint 306, which would be about $8,000. That I feel like is a really good investment. It fits in place where the 302 would go. Not a lot of things need to change for that. Or do I just rebuild this? Even maybe stroke it, like <laughs> stroke it, turn it into a stroker motor. Um, you know, that's an option that would probably be the cheapest option rebuilding this. Um, but, you know, if someone is going to buy this Bronco down the road, do they want a rebuilt engine from John Melton? Um, I know my buddy Donnie could help uh, rebuild the engine. He can give me some guidance on that and help me know what parts to use and that kind of thing. So that's a really good option as well. So uh, what's your what's your thoughts? I, I'm, I legitimately am curious as to what you guys would do in this situation, but I'm not gonna drop this in right now. For now, I'm gonna keep working on the fuel lines and the brake lines and just get them close and uh, leave them a little bit loose so that I know I can put them in when I figure out the engine and transmission. This is the brake line kit from Tom's Off-Road. It comes with all new stainless steel brake lines that run along the frame and along the axles to plumb up the new disc brakes. They also use Crown Performance steel braided brake lines. These are absolutely the best brake lines on the market. I'm gonna be running the Tom's Off-Road 23 gallon tank for additional storage and not run an auxiliary tank up front. I'm also dropping in electronic fuel pump for EFI later, whatever I decide to do with my motor.
All right, that's it for today. Obviously, there's still a lot left to do. I need to put the fuel pump in and run the fuel lines, uh, finish running the brake lines, but really, I need to do all that with the engine and transmission and transfer case in place uh, so that I can get fitment and make sure that you know all that stuff is running the the right way and making sure that like with the fuel lines I don't run my fuel lines too short and it doesn't make it to my throttle body or I don't run them too long and I have all this slack left so I'm gonna pause right here and kind of call this one uh, the end of this episode although there will be more uh, to come with this but seriously I would love to hear from you guys on that engine leave it in the comments below I'm really curious what you guys think I think I've kind of I'm leaning one direction uh, we'll see kind of what happens with it but I want to hear what you guys think I want to hear your thoughts on what I should do for this engine but now my favorite part of these videos the breakdown I started day 14 having already spent $10,500. I installed the four-wheel disc brake kit, which cost $2,000. I also replaced the axle shafts and locking hubs for $950. Then I installed all new brake lines for $300 and the 23-gallon tank with an in-tank pump for $900 for a total of $14,650. I started day 14, 52 hours into this build. I spent most of my time on the brakes, six hours grinding down the stock knuckle and installing the disc brakes and locking hubs up front, three hours on the rear disc brakes, two hours messing with the engine only to realize I wasn't even gonna put it on the frame, then three hours installing the brake lines and the new 23 gallon fuel tank. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Oh, and if you're wondering about the wheels and tires, those aren't the final wheels and tires. I just needed something that I could kind of push around, you know, put them on there, put some casters on there so I could push the body, the frame around while I'm working on it, get it off the, the uh, jack stands. And so, and, and I would recommend that if you're doing a restoration, don't go buy your wheels and tires and put it on there first and then have your Bronco sit for two years <laughs> without actually driving it. So that's my uh, tip as I leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.